Good morning everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to day five in my Gardening for Beginners series. I'm really excited about today. The holidays are over. I hope you all had a fabulous time with your family, but now we can really start focusing on the next gardening season and all the planning that goes along with it. So today, we are gonna discuss how to start flowers from seed. Of course you can start vegetables from seed, um, but that's just not my passion. I really love starting flowers from seeds. So we're really gonna focus on that today. And I think that that is just a game changer. Having the ability to get a beautiful, gorgeous flower that you got from seed that you didn't have to go to the nursery and spend five, eight, ten dollars on, you know, you can buy one pound it for a couple dollars and you can get tons and tons and tons of these beautiful flowers. I think it just opens up so many possibilities for your garden. My favorite sources for seeds are actually Johnny's. I've talked about this before and the reason why I love Johnny's is they have a huge selection and then they have so much information on the back of the seed packet which we'll get to in a little bit. And then I also like florette seeds. And the reason why I like florette seeds is they're just so interesting. They're just ones that I've never seen. And I feel like she hand picks the most beautiful seeds. Every seed that I've started from her is just, it, it's gorgeous. It's so unique and it's so gorgeous and I love it. You can also find some really interesting seeds on places like Etsy um, and then local as well. You know, go to your nursery and see what they have to offer. And you'll know that what they have to offer is gonna do really well in your zone. So like I said before, I love gardening. I love being out there with my hands in the dirt and the birds singing in my ear. But another reason why I love gardening is the planning of it. And I know that that sounds kind of nerdy, but I don't care. I love the planning of gardening. And when you plan to start seeds, um, you know, and get flowers from seeds, planning is a big part. The first thing we're gonna talk about in starting flowers from seed is your supplies that you need. And you do need a couple of supplies and there's a cheap way to do it and then there's a not so cheap way, I wouldn't say expensive, but definitely not so cheap way. And I've done both and I have to say I found that the cheap way to do it just doesn't get the results that I want. So I decided last year to actually invest in some supplies that will really help me. And you can see from behind here, yes we are in my bedroom. It's the only place I have to put it right now, um, but I don't care. I love it in here. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need some type of seed starting vessel. And a lot of people will use, um, you know, the berry, the things that strawberries come in, or sometimes if you go to Costco and you get those muffin tins, you can pop holes in those and you can use um, those muffin you know, plastic clamshell things. Um, what I really like using is I actually like, really like using a seed starting system. And this is my favorite one. Um, it's from Burpee and it's a 72 cell count seed starting system. And this is the self watering kind, which I find really useful. Um, but I just really like the, the shape of these. I think that it's, the 72 cell count is really good sizes. It comes with a humidity dome. Sorry, this one is obviously used, it's dirty. It comes with a humidity dome, which is really important for seed starting for the germination stage. Um, and then it comes with two trays of, let's see if you guys can see that, two trays um, where you can, you know, each cell, you can put your seeds in each cell. Um, and then it comes with the bottom tray, the watering mat, which this goes into the water that you put underneath here, and um, this wicks up the water and then it bottom waters your seeds. And it's basically one whole little system that you can grow your seeds in and it makes it just so easy, so convenient, um, and these fit perfectly on the heating pads that I buy as well. So for the heating pads, I'll link them, I'll link the ones I got, I got them from Amazon. They just plug in and they go right underneath your mat um, and a, a heating pad is really, or a heating mat, excuse me, is really helpful for the germination stage and then just getting those plants to, to really thrive and do well. You don't need a heating mat for your seeds, but it just makes things um, that much easier for you and they're not that expensive, so uh, I think it's, it's well worth investing in a heating mat. 
The thing that I think you absolutely do need is light. So you can put your seeds right next to a window, you know, and then just keep turning it so the seeds don't start bending over towards the light. But my favorite thing, if you go to Walmart and you buy a garage shop light for 20 bucks, it's exactly what you need. And you can just hook it on a shelf and it makes your seed starting area that much easier. It's, it's just fantastic and it's a game changer. And I really think, you know, you're investing your time and your money into starting these seeds and you might as well do it right. And all of these things that you purchase are a one and done purchase. So, you know, I purchased these last year and I know I'm not going to need to repurchase them for a long time. So I will link the seed starting system from Burpees. I will link my heating mat that I use. And then I will also link my uh, shop lights that I got from Walmart. I'll link those as well. So you have the vessel and the environment that you need to start your seeds. Um, and then in addition to that, you're going to need some type of seed starting mix. And and you don't want to use regular potting soil because for one thing it's too dense for the new baby seeds to germinate and work their way through and that type of soil you really need a light lofty soil that they're gonna have a, a really easy time getting through and getting to the light and then also I think one of the biggest things is that seed starting mix is totally sterile that means there's no organic matter no nothing that's living in a seed starting mix and so that means there's nothing that can attack your baby seedlings and cause damping off or anything like that. Um, so seed starting mix is a necessity. There are plenty of recipes online where you can make your own seed starting mix, which I have done as well. I just find that it's not worth it. You don't really save that much money because you still have to go out, you have to buy the peat, you have to buy the perlite, um, and you might as well, you know, depending on your scale that you're planning to do this on, you might as well go buy a bag of seed starting mix. I like to use EB Stone Organics seed starting mix. The only reason why I like to use that is because that's what's available at my local nursery. Um, I think that they're pretty much all the same. They're not, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel or anything like that. Um, it's just really important that you guys get seed starting mix to start your seeds in. And then the last thing you need, and I really don't think I need to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, is you need your seeds. And some of easy starter seeds that I find the easiest to germinate and to grow are zinnias, which are summer flowers. They're beautiful, they're prolific, and they're so easy to germinate. Sunflowers as well. And then one that you can germinate earlier in the spring and plant out earlier in the spring are snapdragons. Those are really easy to germinate and, um, and grow from seed as well. Okay, so you have all your supplies in place, whether you went, you know, the more budget route um, with the straw strawberry clamshell or spent a little bit money with the seed starter trays and the lights and the heating mats and all that kind of stuff completely up to you but now the next step is you need to know how to read the back of a seed packet and that is why I really like Johnny seeds because it really it has so much information on it and it makes it so easy to know how to um, sow your seed and to to get a good healthy plant out of this little seed so I'm gonna going to link this video up above. It's my last video in my Gardening for Beginners series and that's knowing your frost date and it talks all about how to find your frost date and that is probably the first bit of information that you need to know because that is what's going to determine when you're actually going to sow your seeds. So on the back of the packet it's going to tell you whether you need to direct seed or um, transplant basically start indoors like I, like I do here. I always find so much more success if I start indoors and then I transplant out after I have seedlings and I've hardened them off, um, but obviously it's up to you. There's other ones. What Johnny's will say is it will say which one is recommended, which one they think that you should do and you'll have the most success with, but I don't find that always to be true. One really hard seed that I find to germinate is Bells of Ireland and Johnny's recommends that you direct seed Bells of Ireland, but I found so much more success if I just did it indoors in a controlled environment and my germination rate was so much higher when I did it indoors versus outside. So, you know, these are recommendations. This is what Johnny Seeds thinks, but you can imagine the different climates that they're selling their seeds to. So you just have to figure out what works for you. 
So one of the most helpful things that I started doing when I was planning out my seedlings and my sowing seed sowing schedule is I learned that growers, uh, plant growers that grow plants from babies or cuttings or anything like that and then sell them to nurseries, I learned that they number their weeks of the year. So basically uh, whatever week is, has January 1st in it would be considered week one. And then if you look on a calendar, each week from then on is week two, week three, week four, all the way up to week 52 or 53. And I found it for planning all of my gardening projects I found that to be so easy to just have you know the number of the week um, and, and what I needed to do that week whether it was sow seeds or whether it was transplant out or whether it was the the my last frost date week or anything like that um, I just found it so much easier to plan it out week by week you know when you're talking about sowing seeds six to eight weeks before your last frost date you don't want to deal with dates, you know, March 1st and then what's six weeks before March 1st. If you just assign a number to each week, you know, I know my last frost is March 1st, which corresponds to week nine for the year 2022. So I know if I have to plant, sow my seeds six weeks before, that means I need to sow my seeds sometime during week three. So it makes it much more simple. You guys can plan out a calendar, um, you know, with the number of numbers of your weeks and then fill in accordingly what you need to do. Once you pick out what seeds you need, once you read on the back, sow your seeds six to eight weeks before your last frost, then it's so easy to just go onto your calendar, look at what week your last frost is and then count back six, seven, eight weeks, whatever you decide you want to do. So the next thing you want to read on the back of your seed packet is how deep to plant your seeds. It will usually tell you, uh, so a quarter inch deep, so, you know, just barely covering, just press into the soil. It will tell you how deep they think that your seed should be underneath the soil. Um, and it usually corresponds to how much light the seed will need um, to be able to germinate. Some seeds need darkness to germinate, so obviously those are going to be deeper into the soil. And then some seeds actually need light, so you're just going to sprinkle them on the top of the soil. Also, a good rule of thumb is you usually plant the seeds, sow the seeds, uh, two times the size of the seed. So if you have this tiny little seed, you're only gonna you're only gonna go double. And I use that recommendation when I use packets kind of like from Florette that really don't have that information for how deep to sow the seeds. Sometimes she does on certain seeds, but a lot of times, you know, she just kind of leaves it up to you. So knowing how deep to plant your seeds is something that you can find on the back of your seed packet, and it's it's really important information for successful germination. Okay, the last bit of information that you should read on the back of your seed packet is how to prep your seed. And this is called stratification, which basically means that that seed goes through a period of freezing or cold, um, and then it comes out of that, and then it's ready to germinate. So I'm going to use Bells of Ireland as another example. Bells of Ireland requires two weeks of stratification, so two weeks of freezing slash cold temperatures so that that little seed is ready to open up and germinate. Um, so on my calendar, on my week calendar, I know whatever week I'm planning to sow my Bells of Ireland seeds, I just count back two weeks and then I know I need to put those Bells of Ireland seed packet into the freezer so I can stratify my seeds. So all that information will be back on, on the back of a seed packet, specifically Johnny seed packets, um, and that again is just going to help your success with germination. All right, this is a lot of information so far, but it's it's all exciting. This is fun stuff. So the next step after you've gotten your supplies, you've checked the back of your seed packet, now it's time to plant. So this is the fun stuff. So you're going to get whatever vessel you have and you're going to get your seed starting soil and the very first thing you need to do is you need to pre-moisten your soil. You have to do this. I've done it both ways. I've had recommendations that I've seen on YouTube that you don't have to pre-moisten your soil. You absolutely do because it's an absolute mess if you don't. So what you want to do is you want to take your soil, put it in your trusty bucket, 
fill it up with water, mix it around. I usually wear gloves because I don't like the feeling of a uh, wet seed starting mix for some reason. I know that's weird. Um, but I just mix it around and I kind of make a, a slurry and you want it to be a sponge where you can squeeze it and it'll drop a few drops of water out, but you don't want it to be any wetter than that. If you accidentally get it too wet, then you obviously just add more seed starting mix. Um, so you pre-moisten the soil and then you fill whatever vessel that you're going to sow your seeds in. So for me, it's the trays. And then you make sure that you don't press the seed starting mix down. But what I do is I just drop it onto the counter or whatever I'm working on and that will just um, uh, get all the air pockets out of that seed starting mix so that there's no air pockets for those seeds to get caught in and then and then not germinate. Um, so that's something that you definitely want to do and you can get air pockets in seed starting mix when you're filling your, your vessels. So after you've filled your trays or whatever else you're using, make your holes how deep they need to be. And again, you can find this information on the back of your seed packets. I usually use a finger or I actually like the back the end of a sharpie I think that that is you know the, the perfect size for most of my seeds um, and then you just go through and you make your holes and then you plant your seeds um, and one thing that I want to tell you guys is make sure you plant extra seeds because not all of them are going to germinate and it's not your fault you know they could just be seeds that just don't germinate as well um, you just want to have extras because you don't want to put all this time and effort and space into starting these seeds for the, for a couple of the cells not to open up. So make sure you plant extra seeds. One of the things I wanted to talk about, if you guys ever watch Gardener's World um, on BBC, that's an English gardening show that's absolutely amazing. I watched it and I would watch them sow their seeds in this small little tray and they would just pour their seeds on it, you know, just in one uh, big area. Um, not big area. They the, no no dividers, no trays or anything like that. And they would wait for those seeds to germinate, and then they do they call it pricking out the seedlings. And I think that that is such a fantastic idea because then you can make sure that all the seeds that you're sowing in your trays have actually germinated and are viable. So that's a way to do it too. You can just get a little tray, a little something, put some seed starting mix, sow your seeds, and then wait for them to germinate and then prick each one out and put each one into a separate cell. What I usually like to do is I like to sow my seeds. I do, you know, two, three, four seeds in each tray excuse me, in each cell, and then if I have empty cells for whatever reason, I will prick out some of the extra ones and just move them over so that I have a full tray of seeds. So if you're planting a seed underneath the soil, obviously that seed doesn't need light to germinate, but the second that that seedling comes out um, and reaches the air, it sure does need light so that it doesn't stretch or fall over. Um, it needs light right away. So, you know, some people say that you can just sow your seeds and keep checking them and as soon as you see that they've sprouted to put them under light. The way that I do it is that I automatically put them under light because I don't trust myself to get it in time and I don't want to have that responsibility in the back of my mind of making sure to check my tray and then put them under the light. So I automatically, I sow my seeds and then I automatically put them under the light so that I just don't have to worry about it. So after you've planted your seeds, the next step is to manage the environment of these little seeds, seedlings, depending on where, where you are in the germination phase. So like I said, when I sow my seeds, I automatically put them under the light so that I know that these seedlings will have light the second that they pop out and they germinate and I don't have to worry about it. The second thing that you need to do is you need to keep these seeds moist and warm. And that is why seed starting systems will come with this humidity dome because seeds, when they germinate, they have to be kept moist if they dry out they'll die and you'll lose the seed once that that seed coating cracks open you have to keep it moist it's super super important so a humidity dome will help that it will keep some of the moisture in the area and it'll give you a little bit extra time to go in and spray your seeds um, as needed so let's see 
here's one of my sprayers and I'll just go through, I'll set a timer on my phone and every time I walk by I'll check my seedlings and I'll just spray them um, just to make sure that they stay nice and moist. You obviously don't want them too wet um, because then that will you know drown the seeds basically but you just want to keep them you know moist I think is the best the best word to describe that. You also want it to be pretty warm. Um, before I put my seed starting station in my bedroom, I had it out in my garage and I thought, oh, this will be fine. I'll have these heating mats, you know, it, it, it'll work perfectly fine in my garage. And it just didn't. Um, they just struggled. The seedlings struggled. A lot of them didn't germinate. And when they did, it took them forever to germinate. It was just too cold in the garage. And I live in California, you know, it, it it barely gets cold here. You know, the coldest that it ever gets is in the high 20s or something like that. And it was just too cold out in the garage. So having seed mats, having your seed starting system indoors or in, a, in an enclosed environment or something like that is really important because you want those seeds uh, to stay warm. You want that environment to stay warm. That will keep them germinating at a high rate. So you've planted your seeds, you've kept them moist, you've kept them warm, you have light once they germinate so once you see the little baby seedling starting to stick its head out you want to remove that humidity dome and the reason for that is um, you know it's great when the seeds are germinating to have high moisture content around around the seed but once it starts coming out you want to take that humidity um, content and you want to decrease it because if it's too moist, if it's too humid, you can cause the plant, the little seedling, to get what's called damping off. And damping off is a bacteria that can actually kill the seedling, you know, and make all your work wasted. Um, so as soon as you see most of those seeds in your seed starting tray uh, germinated and start coming out, take off that humidity dome. So now you should have all your baby seedlings in your trays, under your lights, on your heat mats, and you kind of just keep keep taking care of them, making sure they're watered. Once it's been about a week or two, you can start using this bottom, bottom watering method if you got these seed starting trays. You don't want to do that right off the top because there's obviously no roots to get the water from the bottom. Um, so you want to spray on the top. But once they've kind of grown a little bit and established some roots, then you can start watering from underneath. Once it's coming towards the time where it's time for you to start planting out your seedlings, you know, so you look at your calendar. For me, it's week nine. One week before that, so starting week eight, I know that I'm gonna start hardening off my seedlings. And hardening off is just getting them acclimated to a different environment. Here in my bedroom, it's warm, it's cozy, there's no wind, there's no harsh sun on them or anything like that. Um, so they're all super protected. So what you're doing when you're hardening off is you're just getting these seedlings used to the out outside environment without causing any shock. Um, so all you have to do is take them out for an hour the first day and then bring them back in. The next day you can take them out for three hours and then bring them back in. The next day you take them out for six hours and so on and so on. So when it gets to day seven, so that will be the next week and it's time to start planting them out, they're going to be used to the outside environment and even if it's you know a really bright sunny day or even if it's really windy that day, those little baby seedlings are going to be prepared for that new environment. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think seed starting is just such a game changer. It makes gardening so much fun uh, because it gives you so much access to all these different types of flowers that you can actually have in your yard for cheap. So it's really gardening on a budget is a really good thing. Um, part of the fun of seed starting is you get to start planting your garden in the dead of winter. You know, it can be cold and rainy and frosty outside and you can be inside gardening. And I just think that that's so much fun and it's part of the reason why I love gardening so much. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Out. Also, if you subscribe, you'll be notified of the next videos in my Gardening for Beginners series. Next week is really fun. We'll be diving a little bit deeper into seed starting and we'll be discussing how to plan a cut flower garden from seed. And that is just a whole nother level of fun. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one very soon.